Hello everyone, my name is Mustafa and in today's video I'm going to talk about basics for the code compilation. Now uh, this topic was raised by uh, some of my followers and uh, I do believe that it is important to have good knowledge of uh, compilation. So we will give it a shot in this video. So today in this video we are going to talk about the GCC, Genu C compiler primarily and uh, give information about uh, GCC options. Uh, we can start by the definition. Uh, so the purpose of code compilation is to transform human understandable code into the machine code. This is how the CPU interprets your uh, human understandable code. Okay, so let's start by drawing our compiler here. Uh, we will focus on what the inputs are and the, what the input, uh, what the output is. Uh, this is uh, primarily important to grasp because all the options, let's say all the flags that we give to the uh, GCC or G++ uh, is depending on the inputs or the outputs. So at the end, we would like to generate a binary file. Binary file will be executed on the platform. Uh, whether it's your host computer, whether it's a target uh, platform uh, such as an embedded system. Uh, we, we will focus on the, let's say, uh, output as the binary file. Of course, uh, we can also have a library, for example, uh, as the output. But for the sake of clarity, let's say that our output will be a binary file. And let's call this binary file my app. Okay, and uh, in the compilation of this process, in the generation of this binary file, we have two inputs basically. One input is the C++ file, a main CPP, and the other can be some headers. It is not mandatory to have this header for the compilation, but we will give this basic example. So. We have at the input one CPP, one header, and the output is the binary file. Now, uh, I'm sure that you've seen uh, some, let's say, GCC or G++ command line examples. So uh, this, what I've written here uh, below uh, to the compiler is one example of the, uh, let's say, command line for the GCC. Any sources we have that we want to compile, we just give it directly as a parameter just after the executable. We don't need to specify any flag or anything. So it will be G++, main CPP. If we have any other source file, we can also edit. Then we use the dash O option, let's say this flag, in order to specify the name of the resultant binary file. So at the end, uh, you can see that uh, we have this command line for this sort of compilation. And for the header file, we don't need this. As long as the header file is located in one of the default include directories. Okay, let's go and uh, make this happen. As you can see here, I have the Visual Studio code, my coding, uh, let's say, workspace. And in this workspace, uh, what I would like to do is uh, I will create a C file. I will create the main CPP and inside we will have a simple printf. I just would like to open up a terminal here and uh, show you that this compilation er works and uh, that the resultant file can uh, print the desired log. You can see that we have the my app application and when we run it, uh, we can get output. This is a program. So that means that our compilation was successful and that we didn't encounter any build issue. There are some methods to extract some information from the uh, resultant binary file. So it's uh, good to show you two of them at least. So one is using the file command. Uh, this file command you can use uh, in order to get some idea and uh, let's say some information about the binary file. You can get uh, you can get the architecture uh, for which it was built and whether it's uh, statically linked or dynamically linked. 
There is also this objdump command. Uh, with the objdump command, you can uh, you can get some information about the content of the uh, binary file. For example, if you use this uh, sims option, which is uh, which is the sim which is the symbols, you can see, let's say, uh, the debug symbols inside the binary. For example, for a production application, of course, you need to eliminate these, but uh, for debugging purpose, these are important. Now we can move on to the header file. So let's say this is some header. And uh, if this some header.h file is located in the project directory then it will be seen by the compiler automatically because in default include paths involve the current directory usr include directory so two directories and and maybe more but these are the important ones so let us create our header file here and uh, in the header file we would like to define some simple variable let's call it my var Okay, and this myvar will be used in the binary itself, uh, in the main CPP. So let us first include the file. Inside the main function, we can say that if this variable that we just defined is defined in the software, then uh, print another, uh, another message like uh, myvar is defined. Here, as you can see, I used the same command line for the GCC as I did it previously. And we can see that my var is defined uh, because this header is able to be found. Uh, it is located in the project folder. Now, what happens if we move it to somewhere else? Let us now create a include folder and simply move the header file that we have into the include folder and let's run the same command and uh, see if it works so just as we suspected it didn't work it is asking uh, it is saying that it can't find the header file why because gcc by default searches for the current path and the uh, special paths like uh, usr include so either we can move it to the usr include which is ill-advised or we simply uh, tell the GCC that uh, some include folder need to be searched as well. We have the third option actually. In the third option, we can simply go to the C file and simply add the path to the include definition. But this is also ill-advised because we do not want to hard code paths into the source code. If, if we must, then we should do this from the uh, compiler, from the build system or uh, from the compiler options. But we can't do it from the source file. That is important. So we won't use this third approach. What we will do, we will add a flag to our GCC command line and we will say that, OK, you can search now uh, for the header files in this path. For this kind of addition, uh, for saying the compiler where to find the include files other than the current directory or the, let's say, some predefined paths, we will be using the I option. Let's say it is the dash I flag. Uh, we will add this and we will give the directory path. It can be an absolute path or it can be a relative path to the uh, let's say project source root path. So then, uh, as I as you can see, I'm continuing with the rest of the command, and now we're ready. Let us execute this and see if this works.
as you can see now the header file is found and uh, we get the compilation successful and we can see that the mar uh, in the output uh, the variable that we defined my var is defined so this is good now we know uh, in addition to how to specify let's say source files and header files uh, to the compiler we know now how to add an include path so let us draw this uh, to our compiler we will try to draw a folder here and uh, it will be the input to the compiler we can also specify more than one path so if we add another i flag uh, we can say uh, that okay use this include two pad as well when searching for uh, some header files okay i can actually show you an example so uh, let's copy this existing include folder and let's create a new one and uh, we will use the uh, the same option we used uh, this dash i option and um, we will try to compile but inside this new header let's have a different variable and uh, also have the changes reflected to the main cpp okay let's go with the compilation As you can see here in the output, we can see that uh, the first variable and the second variable is defined because we included uh, two of the headers and uh, we gave uh, this include pad option in the command line. So this is getting a bit messy, this drawing. I would like to redraw this and uh, we will extend on this. Up until this point, we learned how to add source files, header files and include paths into the compilation process and uh, we got the expected output from the compiler. So what happens if we have third party libraries? If we want to use a third party library, uh, which, which can be of uh, SO or A extension, it can be either statically linked or dynamically linked. Uh, there will be occasions uh, we want to use external libraries. So we also would like to investigate how to tell the compiler uh, that we are using a specific library. For this, I prepared a simple example. I have included the ptread library. ptread library is a system library for Linux. So I simply included it in the main CPP and I used some function from the library. So if I compile this now, uh, I am expecting an error actually because we didn't compiler, uh, we didn't tell the compiler that uh, we, we are using this specific uh, library. So the error here is undefined reference to some function. Uh, if there is a linker problem, uh, regarding the libraries this is the usual error that you will see so uh, we will need to also tell the compiler uh, to use a specific library so for that we will use this L option As you can see, we added the command line option dash lp thread. This basically translates to the libpthread.so. So the compiler uh, will try to find this. Okay. Let us add also here and see if it works. As you can see here, uh, the compilation was successful. So uh, although we have some warnings uh, because I had to adjust the arguments of the uh, function, 
uh, we have the binary generated uh, so we can use it uh, since the library we used is known to the compiler in terms of the location, uh, this libp thread is located in the USR lib folder, uh, which is a default library search path. Uh, we didn't have to specify any other, uh, let's say, library search path. But in in some cases, uh, in in the cases where a library is not installed in the system, but in some other folder, we also need to include the capital L option. If we specify the capital L option, then uh, we can tell the compiler to okay search for a specific path when finding the library that we specified with the lower L. Here, as you can see in the command line, we can specify uh, with the capital L the library search path. So uh, after this, uh, let us also donate how many of these options uh, we are free to use. We can use only one output. We can use uh, as many as we want for the uh, libraries, include paths and library search paths. And also source files and header files uh, will be many. Okay. With this pattern given, I think this is a good stopping point. So if you have any questions, please use the comment section. Uh, in the future, uh, we can make more uh, compilation videos uh, regarding maybe build systems. Uh, we can delve uh, right into the uh, gen you make, C make, that sort of thing. Uh, but, but, but I think this is a good starting point and uh, we will see when we get there. So uh, that's it. If you like my videos, please like, share and subscribe and uh, share with your friends and uh, I will see you in the next video.